Roberto Tobin here at the Ontario Diagnostic Days, catching up now with uh, the spray guy, Jason DeVoe. Jason, how's it going? Great, Bern. Nice to see you. Awesome. Always great to have Omafra's spray guy on Real Agriculture. Jason, your presentation today, you've been talking about mitigating drift, basically, you know, spray drift and keeping herbicides, fungicides where they're intended. Um, you've got some keys that growers should be following. What's top on your list? Well, number one is to recognize that any sprayer operator has it within their control to mitigate spray drift. We're not we're not prey to this sort of thing. The first and easiest thing an operator can do is change their droplet size. It's simple physics. You go to a larger droplet, it's more likely to continue to travel on the path you set it on and less likely to be, say, blown off course or to evaporate to a point where it drifts away on you. So larger droplets are definitely one thing you can do. Uh, the next thing would be boom height. And think about this like the longer a droplet is in the air between where you made it and where you want it to go, the more things can go wrong. Again, the coarser droplet, less likely to be blown off course, unless you're in hurricane conditions, then who should be spraying? The smaller the droplet, the longer it's exposed to those forces, and the more, more likely it's gonna blow away. And, you know, really, it's not just the herbicide. Obviously, we don't wanna burn the neighbors, but it's any product that you're spraying where we want nice, consistent coverage under the boom and nothing moving left or right or back and forth. So those are two really great things an operator can do to make things better. Now, Jason, I hear a lot of growers talking about drift agents these days and, uh, and to help manage drift. Where do they fit? Well, this is kind of why we did this here today. We wanted to show that the first and two most effective ways to prevent drift are droplet size and boom height. The last step is the drift reduction adjuvant. Most of them are formulated to reduce the number of tiny drops that are created. Uh, that is not a silver bullet. It's not the shield. It's not the first thing you do. It's kind of the last thing you do when it really, really matters. So, you know, sad news, everybody wants that silver bullet. It doesn't exist. It's not the first thing, but the last thing. And I'm holding this fabulous boom so I can actually show you. It sounds really simple. Of course, little things move funny. Of course, big things move in straight line. But look what happens. We have an XR nozzle, really fine, and a coarser droplet, and you can see it all blowing. The closer I get to the ground, the less and less time that droplet has to be affected by other things, the more likely it is to end up. And there's a piece of software out of Ohio State called DriftSim. It's a lot of fun for nerds like me, and it's a model, it's just physics. How far can a droplet go? A 150 micron droplet released from three feet in a seven mile an hour wind potentially can go about 16 feet downwind. If you just drop the boom to two feet instead of three, you cut that by more than half. It's only six feet. Now we add, let's go to bigger droplets too. If we go to a 300 micron droplet, medium, medium course, and we go back up to three feet, it's only gonna go a foot and a half off course. We do all of it, bring that boom down with larger droplets, it might drift half a foot. And I don't know what a, a drift reduction adjuvant would bring to the party. It would be better, but again, it's kind of the last of the three. Final question for you, Jason. That is, you know, you talk about situational awareness for operators and growing growers, knowing the situation, knowing, you know, their surroundings so they can make the right application decisions to avoid drift. That's exactly right. Know what's around you. If you're a custom applicator, maybe you've never been to this field before, take a minute to look over the hedge, to look downwind, to, to get an impression of is what you're spraying, what is the potential impact of that? Because once you gauge what the environment is and understand what it can do to a droplet and what could happen if things really go sideways, then you can make the decision about how much you want to invest in mitigation. Because it's not free. Dropping the boom means maybe slowing down. Using coarser droplet means, heaven forbid, getting out of the cab and switching to another nozzle, which you know just seems to be the worst case in, in the world for some guys. So before you invest that time or that energy or maybe the additional water and time, you kind of want to balance the pros and the cons, and that's situational awareness. Great stuff, uh, Jason. I always appreciate you making time for Real Agriculture. Thanks, Bern.